was afraid I was going to smack myself in the head on this lantern <laughs> getting out the door, but fortunately for me and unfortunately for you, it, it didn't happen. Beside me, what you see here is a um, power station and a solar panel, and I'm going to do a um, bit of a review on them, and then I'm going to get into some other stuff for the shelter here, which has um, been freaking me out all the time. I'm constantly worried I'm going to come out here and see damage, and I've got to do something about that, but I'll get to that. So let me tell you the backstory of this thing. About three years ago, I had the idea of doing these big adventures, and I still have the idea of doing those big adventures. I just financially I can't do it. So um, <laughs> hopefully through your help, and I can get some more views on the channel as well, and make some money through it, I can get out there and do those adventures. But if I'm doing a multi-day, multi-week survival challenge, or going out hunting trips and camping out of the full drive out of a boat, whatever it is, I need a way to charge all my batteries. I've got to keep the cameras running, filming lights, laptops, you know, phone, so I can be in touch with the outside world if something goes wrong, using my GPS on my phone as well. So I was thinking I'd need a power station. However, financially, it just wasn't an option at that stage, and still isn't. But then fast forward three years, and a um, little while ago, the company Blue Eddy reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to review this uh, power station here. And I didn't reply to them straight away. I, uh, I think it took about three days before I replied their email. And in that three days, I watched review videos on this thing and also researched the company. Because if I'm getting something for free, that's, that's great. But if it's rubbish, <laughs> what's the point of it? So I wanted to make sure it was good, good quality and the company was good as well. So if you've got any problems with it, they, they can be contacted and, and issues can be resolved. Yeah, so for me it was important because you know I get to keep these things. <laughs> I don't get paid for it, but I do get to keep them. But for you, you get to see a product that I believe in and I think is good um, rather than seeing a video and then at the end of it saying, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't buy that. Yeah, after a couple of days, I contacted the company and said, yep, I'd love to have the, um, the power station. So this is the um, Blue Eddy EB3A. And I said to them, you know, you, you guys also make solar panels. Can you, uh, can you send me one of those as well so I can be completely off grid out here? And they were kind enough to do that. But just this um, device on its own, you can uh, plug it into your power point at home, charge it up, takes about an hour, then you're good to go. Take it out the bush if you're out with the family, camping out of a four-wheel drive out of a boat whatever it may be keep all your devices charged up now it's not going to run you know air conditioning units and all those sorts of things and it's not designed to do that but for what i want it's perfect it's um a bit over four kilos i'll put all the stats on the screen as i'm saying it so if i say anything wrong just read the screen um but i'll try to be accurate it's not something you're going to stick in your backpack and hike off up, up into the bush with. You can if you want, but it's just way too heavy for that, for my liking. The company do make uh, power banks, so that'd be perfect. One of those, chuck it in your backpack, you can off you go for a few days, keep everything charged up. But for a base camp, like where I am here, operating out of the base camp, so I can come out here and film and edit at night times and you know, do everything, it's, um, it's gonna be great for that. And if I get to go out and do those big adventures I wanna do, I can set up a base camp yeah, at nights, recharge everything, ready to go for the next day of filming. Now, um, they do make bigger units. They've got a whole range of units, so all the way up to, if you want to fully run your house, they've got solar panels and the units that you can run everything, all your fridges, air conditioners, you name it, you can run it. Um, obviously, they're a lot more expensive and a lot bigger and heavier than this thing. But, um, yeah, cockatoo's just going over. See the um, part of the morning chorus here. sulfur crested cockatoo. Um, I'm surprised the kookaburras aren't going off. They did first light, but um, they're a bit quiet at the moment. Looking at the camera and my um, battery light is flashing. How ironic, doing a, uh, doing a video on a power station and my battery's about to die. So, all right, I gotta grab another battery, put it in the camera and I'll um, keep going. All right, well, I wasn't planning to do this. You know, why not charge it when I've got a charger right here? So I'll run you through 
what I've got going on here on the face of this thing. All right, so what you're looking at is the um, my camera battery plugged in. This is your 240 volt AC out. You've got a USB-C port, which is a 100 watt output. You've got two 5 volt uh, USB-A ports. All my other battery chargers for the cameras and the filming lights, they're all um, USBs, so it's handy, I can plug them in. You've got two regulated 12 volt 10 amp DC outputs and one 12 volt 10 amp output. So that's what you got on the face. On the top of it, you got a 15 watt wireless charger. So you can throw your smartphone up on it. So in all, there's eight outputs. So whatever your, uh, whatever your needs are, there's a, um, an option there for plugging it in. And as you saw at the start of the video, you can charge multiple uh, devices at the same time. And for your charging options, you've got your uh, 240 volt, so you can plug it into your mains and your AC and charge it up at home in around an hour if you don't have the solar panel but if you've got the solar panel you can plug that in here you can charge both AC and solar at the same time with a maximum of 430 watt input but yeah that's um that's basically the rundown over here you've got a you've got a nice bright light and you've got a um, SOS function on that as well if you're um, in really desperate need at the moment I'm just charging this one here if I wanted to charge something else it's just a matter of turning that on if I want to stop this I can just turn it off and it goes back to zero output but yeah it tells you um, percentage of your batteries it tells you how long it's going to be running for with the amount of draw that you've currently got in it this is your input so once I've got the solar panel on you'll see that feeding power back into it the other thing with this is you can download the smart blue Eddy app onto your phone and then you can um, see everything that's going on with it. So in the base of this unit, you've got a 268 watt hour LifePo 4 battery. All right, well I was thinking about this thing last night, trying to think about what to say in this video, just <laughs> make it interesting for you. And I was thinking that over 99% of the time, I'm not in the bush. As much as I'd like to be, the reality of my life and most other people's lives are you're at home, you're, um, you're on grid power, so you don't have a, a need for something like this. But when the power goes out, yeah, you can have your uh, your mobile phone, you've got your data on there so you can watch your YouTube videos, my videos, if you, hopefully. And you, you've got candles, you've got flashlights and things, so it's not a big issue. But if I want to watch YouTube on my laptop and the power's gone out, I, um, I'll have to figure out how to tether or share data or whatever it is from my mobile device to my laptop, which I don't know, so I'd have to I'd have to learn all that. Because the router for my internet at home, it's um, plugged into the mains power, into the AC power. So if that power goes out, I lose my router, I lose my internet. But with this device, I can unplug my router out of the wall, plug it into here, happy days. Everyone at home's got the um, got the internet, just like normal. And then you, uh, when you, your device is run down from watching all that YouTube videos, you can charge them up on this thing as well. And you've got yourself a solar panel to go with the unit keep it all charged up and um, yeah turn my lantern out without dropping it on me because I don't think I need a light anymore uh, what I will say at this stage of um, all the stats on these things so for further information on them I'll um, put links in the uh, video description so you can go on there if you want to learn more about the, um, the power station or the, um, the solar panel you can go on that I'll also have an affiliate link there, so if you want to buy these things, you can click on that. I'll get a small kickback. I'll also see if I can get a, um, a promo code, so you'll get a discount on the purchase as well. And if I can get that, I'll put all that in the video description for you, get you guys the best deal possible um, if you do want this device. All right, I'm going to drink my cold cup of tea and wait for that sun. See you in a minute. So as you can see, the sun's trying to break through the clouds. It's not doing a great job of it at this stage but hopefully it burns off shortly. So this is the PV120. It's a 120 watt solar panel, fold out solar panel. That's it there. Now on the back of it, you've got these little clip things and Velcro. These are your legs, so if you want to set them out, you go through. On the back of this one, you've got another one. 
comes out. That's your leg. And then here is all your, your charging cables to go with it. All right. I'll set it up first and then I'll put that in. Now I'm going to have to move this around to follow the sun. Bear with me. All right, so that's your solar panel set up. Quick and easy. We're plugged in, but we've got a flashing light over here, input. So as you can see, I got the camera pointed straight at the sun, and yeah, well, you say what sun? <laughs> That's just because there's a lot of cloud cover, and the solar panel is showing that um, charge light flashing, simply because there's not enough light getting into it. But it's set up, and as the sun hopefully breaks through those clouds and the clouds burn off, I can move the solar panel around and um, actually get some charge into that battery. It's meant to be blue sky day. <laughs> Right, while I'm waiting for that um, sun to break through these clouds, which will probably happen now that I'm up here, this is my air vent, pipe going down into the shelter, and this sits on top. And the idea being, when we get a, a good breeze, it hits the back of this when I rotate this towards the, the breeze, and as it comes over the top, it creates this eddy, which then draws the air out of the shelter. So, if there's a bit of smoke in the shelter, it'll actually draw that out, and even just humidity in the shelter, it'll um, yeah, help remove that moisture by drawing that air out and sucking fresh air into the shelter. But the problem is, this is all pottery, which I've refined the clay, made this, fired it in my um, primitive stone kiln, and yeah, and put it all together. But I've got a dead tree over here, another tree right above me here, all around here there's trees. So when we get strong wind, you get branches like, that's not going to worry me. But if a bigger branch comes down on that, it's going to just smash it. This framework I built on top here, what I'm thinking is, is I can lay that on the roof somehow. And then these pieces with a fork can sit over the top of that timber. So then if I've got another one down here something hits here it's going to spread the load over this whole area instead of just making this into a, a spike that's going to stab through the roof wouldn't it be funny if i'm making all this to protect this and in the process i smash it with, <laughs> with one of these oh i kind of laugh something like that keep that for firewood i've had this thing for four years. I've never snapped a blade. People always say about snapping blades on their silky. Never snapped a blade. If you look back through some of the stuff I've done with it, I've cut wood that round with it, hardwood, Australian hardwood. I have had bent a blade. That came from cutting bamboo. When I did the first shoulder, I had all this bamboo overlap and then cutting through it and it bind on the bamboo, but never snap one. <laughs> Katana boy, 500 that much longer for what I do send me one silky <laughs> how many plugs do I have to give silky before they'll give me a saw I can't afford one so um, yeah if you think silky should send me one put it in the comments tag them and whatever else you have to do to get silky to um, send me a uh, Katana Boy 500 Alright, well I finally got a bit of sun. I'm about 10 metres from the shelter, which is just over there. And that's the beauty of this unit. Because it's only 4 point something kilos, I can pick this and the solar panel and everything up 
and chase the sun around and it's not a problem at all. It's still not ideal. I've still got the sun behind clouds a little bit and it's behind trees so there's you know not the strongest amount of light on here but I'm currently getting 41 watts of power in but it's not anywhere near what the solar panel is um, rated for so 120 watt solar panel and that's under ideal conditions but anyway once again that's the EB3A power station and the PV120 solar panel finally found the Sun <laughs> had to hike to the very top of the property but found the Sun now I can um, carry all this stuff back down to the shelter and keep going with that build. Well, I reckon that's pretty rock solid and you can pick it up in the air, but anything lands on that That's going to be protected. So Yeah, another task taken care of out here at the shelter If you are interested in that blue eddy product, I'll leave the uh, link in the description You can go check it out till next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one